Hello and welcome to our 242 service. Uh, this will be the third in our series looking at loving our neighbour. Uh, in particular looking at social justice and ethical justice issues throughout the world and seeing how we as Christians are called to react to that, to act in those situations. And this week we're thinking a little bit more about close to home, social and ethical justice issues here in Scotland, here in our very community. As we've been preparing, we've been looking into stats and statistics, which you'll be hearing through today's video, uh, looking into the concept of homelessness, uh, looking into the concept of uh, unemployment, also child poverty and food bank usage here in Scotland and in Britain. And some of those stats and statistics, they're actually kind of scary. <laughs> you look and you don't realise just the impact that injustice really has on people around us. And you can see people who are genuinely struggling. And that is a challenge to me and a challenge to all of us as we've been studying through it over the last month in our youth work. And we're wanting to continue to think down that path of how we can continue to love our neighbour over these subjects. Love our neighbour here in Scotland when it comes to social and ethical justice issues. So we're going to start by reading part of Deuteronomy chapter 24, which Bethany is going to read for us now. And I want to just unpack a little bit about that afterwards. Deuteronomy 24 verses 19 to 22. When you are harvesting in your field and you overlook a sheaf, do not go back to get it. Leave it for the foreigner, the fatherless and the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat the olives from your trees, do not go over the branches a second time. Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless and the widow. When you harvest the grapes in your vineyard, do not, go over to the, do not go over the vines again. Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. That is why I command you to do this. There has been a huge increase in the number of emergency food parcels distributed by independent food banks in Scotland. Figures for April 2020 as compared to April 2019 show a 246% rise in the number of emergency food parcels distributed. From March 2019 to March 2020, they show a 76% rise. In comparison, excluding the COVID-19 crisis from February 2019 to February 2020, the rise was 12%. 61% of low-income families in Scotland can't afford to make regular savings of £10 a month or more. 15,711 children were in households assessed as homeless in 2019 to 2020. This is equivalent to 43 children in Scotland becoming homeless every day. Deuteronomy 24 was wrote to the Jewish people as they were freed from slavery and after wandering through the wilderness for 40 years, not really having the courage to go and take that promised land. Finally, they gain that courage. And God is encouraging them just before they go to remember what is important to him as they set up their kingdom, as they set up their nation. Remember these things. There's a whole bunch that it goes into, but we're focusing on more social and ethical justice within that community, i.e. taking care of people who are vulnerable. When we look through that passage, we see the, the challenge for the average person who owns land to think about those who are vulnerable, who won't be able to provide for themselves, for the widow, the orphan and the stranger. So as a challenge to each member who's going to go on and start setting up their fields or vineyards, what do you do with your own produce? What do you do with that? And it challenges the people of God to do three things. I'm going to go into them a little bit just now. Firstly, uh, to make sure people can provide for themselves by leaving part of your own produce for others. Secondly, being hospitable to others. And then thirdly, remembering why. So firstly, uh, this concept of leaving part of your field for other people. Once you went over it and there's some left over, he's calling the people of God not to go and claim everything that's theirs to leave a little bit behind. Why? For those that can't provide for themselves, plain and simply, to make sure that they have this opportunity to do that very thing, to provide and to care for themselves and maybe their families as well. It is an invitation for the people of God who have to give, even if those people are strangers and foreigners to the land. God is opening up his justice and refuge to all people in the community who are vulnerable, opening up his arms, to give to those who struggle. 
Secondly is the concept of hospitality. If you're leaving part of your field open for people to come and take from, well, you're inviting people into your very home. Uh, one of the people who uh, I remember when I think of this concept is Boaz in the book of Ruth. He welcomes Ruth in to work alongside with his workers so that she is safe and protected as she provides for herself and for her mother-in-law. Is this great challenge of hospitality to help those who are in need with what we have? And then lastly, he's calling them to remember why. Why are you doing this? Well, it's because I freed you from slavery. I freed you from being people who are vulnerable in another nation so that you can become a light to all other nations around. You can become people who show what it's like to live for a just God. Have a community where everyone is cared for and provided for. So as they go into their land, remember what happened to them before and know that God saved them so that they can be a blessing to others. So they can be a light that shines out to the other nations around. That is the challenge that comes and it reflects God's character, a person of justice and love. More than one in four, that's 260,000 of Scotland's children are officially recognised as living in poverty. In Glasgow, this number is at least one in three. In the six months between April and September 2020, there were 16,997 homelessness applications and 13,645 households assessed as homeless. This equates to a household losing their home every 19 minutes. Record 2.5 million food bank parcels given to people in crisis in the past year as the Trussell Trust calls for governments at all levels across the UK to commit to developing a plan to end the need for food banks once and for all. So what is our calling as Christians as we look back to that passage? Well, uh, it's a bit hard to take directly from it because, well, our economy, the way we live is very different than what it was back then. The average person doesn't have a field to which they can divvy out and uh, not go back over. We work in various places. We're involved in very different organisations than the average farmer was back then. Life is different, but still there's principles that we can learn and take forward. So what I want you to kind of think about is uh, Jesus in Mark chapter 3. Uh, as he's going around teaching various places, he's teaching in a synagogue and there's a man in front of him who has a, a disfigured arm. It's shriveled up. He can't do what the regular person can do. And as this is the Sabbath, the teaching of the Pharisees would suggest from the law, that means you can't heal him because what's important to do is to rest and not to work. But what Jesus calls out to the people and says is what's better to do on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil? And in light of that, he heals the man. What do I mean by this? Well, the law that was given, the law that was given had a spirit behind it to show how we do good, how we love our neighbour, how we care for the people around us. And that spirit is what inspires us as Christians to continue doing what Jesus did and what God has been calling the people of God to do forever. So in light of that, how do we look at that passage? Well, we do the same things, the same principles that the people of God did. We make sure people can care for themselves. We make sure that we are hospitable. And on top of that, we remember. Let me just unpack that a little bit. First of all, we make sure people can provide for themselves. There's something really important for us to do as Christians to make a community that's centered around the point of making sure people can care for one another. People can care for their family. People are not vulnerable. One of the organisations that I've had a bit of contact with over the last few years is Christians Against Poverty. They're one of the, the best organisations I've came across that deal with this very thing because one of the things that really hinders people is debt. It really makes life hard and puts people in poverty even if they're working full-time jobs, debt. Christians Against Poverty are focused in on making sure people get out from debt and to freedom. That's an organisation I would highly suggest that help us to continue that very thing that God's been calling us to do to help people provide for themselves. Christians Against Poverty always need more people to get involved in some way, shape or form. That's a challenge I would have because it's such a good organisation that's helping people to get from the weight of debt into a new way of life. And at the same time, 
letting them know about Jesus as well. Secondly, being hospitable to people. One of the things that uh, I've also had an opportunity to get involved with is soup kitchens, as well as that food banks. These, pe these places are always looking for more people to get involved and to uh, help giving through resources or whatever. This is a great challenge for us because we can help people in that very same way by showing hospitality to them and showing love to them. Letting them know that we're there as they're struggling, eating with them and talking with them. It's so important. And then lastly, why do we do this? We do this because we remember that we were once slaves, just like the people that he was speaking about in Israel. We were once slaves, not in the same manner they were, but we were slaves to sin and death. But Jesus, through what he did on the cross, he died and he rose again for us so that we'd be freed, taken from a place of darkness and put into a place of light. Because of what Jesus did for us, we are called to be people of justice, people who bring life and light to everything around us, people who show love. So hopefully that is a challenge to you as we continue to look in to what it means to be a Christian in this day and age and what it means to show love in these areas where it's difficult to think about ethical and social justice. How do we react? We react because God has called us to. People sleeping on the street are almost 17 times more likely to have been victims of violence. More than one in three people sleeping rough have been deliberately hit or kicked or experienced some other form of violence whilst homeless. More than one in four or approximately 260,000 of Scotland's children are officially recognised as living in poverty. In the absence of significant policy change, this figure is likely to increase in the coming years, with Scottish Government forecasts indicating that it will reach 38% by 2030 or 2031. The astute among you will realise that over these last few months, under this topic of loving your neighbour, in reality, we've just been saying the same thing over and over again. Slightly different ways, slightly different lenses, considering the impact on the environment and climate change and climate justice, considering uh, our purchasing and fashion and the implications that come with that, considering the local needs and injustices that are around us. But it's the same truths and the same message at its heart. We have a God who is a God of love and justice. And we, as his people, are called to be people of love and justice, who work out that truth in every aspect of our lives, regardless of whether or not people are looking on to see the deeds that we do, regardless of how convenient it is for us or what we might gain from the situation or lose in every aspect of our lives, because that is the example shown to us. I just love that picture uh, that we have reflecting over this farmer's field. I can just imagine a farmer sitting there on the hillside looking over all that he has, being thankful for it and considering how best to use it. We, I believe, should be like that farmer, acknowledging the field that we have in front of us and reflecting on how it is used. And that works out especially for us as God's children. You see, each and every one of us has been shown generosity in abundance by God. All that you have, all that you are is the gift of God is granted to you, it is not earned. And as such, we must reflect on what we do with that. I still have a memory of when I was a young boy going along to Sunday school. And every Sunday, my gran would give me a pound coin to take with me to put in the offering box. And I remember there were Sundays there where I'd maybe think, I could just pocket this, it'd be great to have a quid. That was a huge deal back then, especially, like I could buy so much with that. But I didn't, because it wasn't mine to take. It was given to me to be used as my gran has intended. But also knowing my gran, I knew how generous she was in so many other areas. 
It wasn't just that she was only ever giving me this pound, there was so much more that she granted and gave to me. The same is true with us. Our lives are filled what we have. It is a gift of God. And God asks us to reflect on how we use that gift. Not that we give every ounce of it away, but that we are considerate, compassionate, loving, and generous with it, just as he is to us. And that works out in actions of justice. It works out in love of our neighbor. It works out in our interactions with everyday folk that we meet along the road. This is not about turning up on a Sunday and ticking a box. It's not about how we are seen as Christians. It's about who we are and who we are invited to be. A generous, loving, just God who invites us and empowers us to be generous, loving, and just too with everything we got. So I encourage you to reflect over your field to take the time to consider what you have, to take it, to use it, and to make the most of it with generosity, because that is what has been shown to us.